Hi, and uh, welcome to the podcast for nicksmoot.com. Uh, today, I want to do two things. Um, one, off of the suggestion of someone I met with and a couple other people, is I want to let you know a little bit more about me. And uh, two, uh, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about the stages of change. And uh, hopefully, uh, what I've seen from my experience with teens where uh, most people are at. So a little bit about me. Um, if you don't know, for those of you who know me, this might not be new news to you, uh, but if you stumble across this website or you're watching from somewhere else and you don't know me, it probably would be important for me to tell you a little bit about who I am. Um, I'm going to upload some stuff onto the website, more of my bio information and uh, a little bit of my resume about my life. But for the last uh, eight years, I worked at uh, a church that was considered the fastest growing church in America. Um, it's 10 years old now and uh, runs usually about seven to 8,000 people on the weekends and uh, started, uh, like I said, 10 years ago and was super high rate of speed growth for a period of time and trying to learn how to keep up and a uh, great experience. Uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful time where I got to work with anywhere from middle school to college age, got to collaborate with some great thinkers on how to um, do development paths from elementary all the way up through college. Uh, We've learned a lot of things, studied a lot of books, um, went to a lot of conferences. I got a chance to speak and teach um, a lot of places, not just locally, but also internationally, and have taken teenagers to different places and uh, worked with teens around the world. Um, spent hundreds of hours sitting in um, conversations between parents and teens, have uh, listened for probably thousands of hours to teenagers talk about their families and um, their perceptions on them spoke um, for public high schools, um, have done school assemblies, have spoke to thousands of teenagers before at different events. So um, teens, are, it's not a new world to me. It's something I've done for a long time. And uh, yeah, that's just a little bit about me. So you know, I'm not just some random guy from North Idaho that uh, is, you know, decided one day he wanted to start thinking about teenagers. Um, for those of you who know me, you already know that I love teens and parents, and I have a hope for them to find successful, um, healthy relationships where it leads them towards a, um, a great future. Uh, with that said, today what I want to talk a little bit about is the stages of change. Um, if you don't know, anytime you make a major change in your life, these are usually some of the phases you go through. There's like four or uh, five uh, stages, but um, we're just going to talk about four main ones today. The four are... First, it's pre-contemplation, then there's contemplation, then there is action, and then there is maintenance. Pretty self-explanatory four phases, but uh, let me explain them anyways. Pre-contemplation is that spot where eh, you don't even recognize it as a problem yet. Uh, you're not even thinking about it. So maybe someone says something to you about the problem, and you're going, eh, I guess it's maybe. Um, that's pre-contemplation. Contemplation is you recognize it as a real problem. So uh, you've actually got to the spot now in your brain where you see the issue and you uh, kind of want to do something about it. You haven't done anything yet, but you know it's a problem. Action is that step where now you're putting into play a different behavior, pattern, method, um, something that is changing um, your outcome, your result, your problem. A lot of times it takes a, a big catalyst or something to stir the pot to motivate you to action. Um, and then there's the final phase or like I said, the fourth phase, let's leave it at that, of maintenance. Um, you have made the action step and now it's time to maintain it for the long haul so it becomes a healthy long-term change. What I see from my experience with teens and parents is that the majority of our nation, good parents, um, some good teens, they're not all horrible, but that we exist in that place of contemplation in regards to the, um, the, the quality and quantity of time we spend as families. Um, we know it's a problem. It, it's, not, um, it's not a secret that most families, and parents and teens especially, they realize they're not spending a lot of time together. The parents understand, they feel it in their heart, they feel it in their, um, just inside, and they understand, and they know that they're, it, it could be better. Teenagers, you know the same thing. You understand, and I've talked to plenty of you, that you've expressed to me your deep down desire to actually be connected to your parents, and you're not. 
You know that. You contemplate the problem. The issue, though, is, is that there's not a lot of change. If you look at majority of the uh, you know, social institutions out there, they exist where you have a parent side, you have a teen side. Not a lot of them are intergenerational or connecting them. We, um, I guess, with Simple Mentoring and Mythos Project, want to be a catalyst for change. We want to help, uh, I guess, motivate the culture to make this change. What I'm suggesting today, though, is parents, as you're listening, start thinking now. What kind of action steps do you need to take so that you can start improving your relationship with your teen? Teens, start thinking now. What kind of action steps should I be taking? And cater it to your own family. Every family is a little bit different. Your action steps won't be the same as the next family. But you need to be thinking now, what can you do? What kind of, um, you know, what, what new pattern, behavior, method do you want to implement in your family? Maybe it's um, a once a week dinner. Maybe you're not even doing dinner together as a family. Maybe once a week you set aside four hours, three hours, you know, maybe when I said four hours, you went, oh, that's impossible. Seriously? Four hours out of a week? That's impossible? Come on. It's possible. Saturday, maybe you chunk it out and do a long lunch. I don't know, but figure it out for your family. What will it be that starts improving and creating real change? Um, I'm kind of vague about what we're doing with Mythos Project and Simple Mentoring because... April 2nd at 6.15 p.m., we are pulling back the curtain on the exciting new steps we're going to be taking. We're introducing the new uh, method and model, uh, our strategic plan, our vision and mission of how we are going to be that catalyst of change and provide a new avenue or a, um, a vehicle for families to interact and uh, reconnect. So please don't miss that day. Um, Intentionally, like I said, I'm being vague, and I want us to all realize that we're contemplating the problem, and uh, we're going to be helping everybody understand an action step. So, uh, love to see you guys there, 615, Coeur d'Alene Library. If you can't make it, we will be live broadcasting, um, and I'll be sending out the URL for all of you to um, log online and watch it that day, live. Um, so, excited to see you guys there. Invite friends or family, different um, influencers, um, people you know around you to watch it, to be a part of it, to come to it. Um, I want to see the place um, with a, a good turnout, hopefully, because this definitely is something I'm excited about that I believe will uh, change how parents and teens interact around the United States. And it's a positive change of reconnecting the family in America. See you guys uh, tomorrow.